Hello my friends of Genshin Impact, my name is Tildrell and today we talk about Ye Miko, the new upcoming 5 star character in Genshin Impact that is from the Electro Element and will be wielding a catalyst into battle. As always, we take a look at the character sneak peek that Mihoryu provided for us and then we dive into more informative websites to really uh, take a look at those scalings and actual numbers. But before we even begin to analyze this upcoming character, just let me tell you that she is a shaman from World of Warcraft. Just not as good looking. Looking at her base stats, we can see that she is a pretty solid character with crit rate as ascension stat, which indicates a possible main DPS viability. But don't get your hopes up that high, guys, because I already looked through her whole kit and I am unsure if you uh, can actually play her as main DPS to great success. Because, yeah, let's take a look at her uh, normal attack talent first. Her normal attack talent lets Ye Miku fall into the category of characters where we all complain about how cool those animations look, but uh, we will never be able to see them in actual fights in game. Because for some reason, Mihoyo decided to give Yemiko pretty underwhelming ratios on her auto attacks. I mean, look at her level six. Those ratios on her auto attacks are pretty bad. The only saving grace uh, are her charged attacks because it's a little bit above average, but not on a charged attack carry level, yeah? For comparison, this is Yanfei's charged attack and we can see that Yemiko's charged attack is in between her um, 4 and 5 sigil charged attacks. So it could deal some good amount of damage, but keep in mind, Yemiko is from the Electro element. She is not Pyro, not Hydro and not Cryo. So you will not be able to vaporize or melt any of her attacks. And this is actually where yeah, the most damage of hyper carries comes from. And since we're speaking of charged attack carries, just compare Ye Miko's attack power of her charged attack with Barbara's at level 6. Barbara has an over 230 uh, damage scaling. Ye Miko on level 6, just 200. And this is just devastating. <laughs> Because Barbara even has the possibility to vaporize her damage and, and even double everything she could potentially deal. Yemiko just sits in the corner and, and cries over her limited damage ceiling. Okay, now let's take a look at her E, her elemental skill. When you press it, you dash a certain distance straight ahead and you leave a totem. Those totems will damage your enemies and although this looks like AoE attacks, these totems will just damage one single enemy. Um, for each totem out there simultaneously at the same time, uh, this electroshock damage will get higher. And I think this skill is best compared with Fischl's Oz. When you have uh, all three of those totems outside on the field, then uh, your enemies get damaged as frequent as if you would just summon Oz. Yeah, I still can't get over the fact that Mihoyo didn't make these totem attacks AOE. I'm, I'm, I mean, what was the problem? Yemiko is a five-star character. At least make her good. Make her shine, Mihoyo. Uh, yeah, at least they gave her a little damage amplifier for every totem that is up at any given time. So with three totems up simultaneously, you will deal more damage than if you just would have one out on the field. Three totem power action. Looking at the actual numbers and scalings of this skill, we can see that the, the damage output of her elemental skill is quite meh. For comparison, this is official skill and it even has an initial summoning damage when enemies are near enough when uh, Oz appears. And on level 6, Oz attack damage that uh, gets applied pretty frequently, I might say, has almost 125% of Fischl's damage. Um, when you have all three totems out, it's not 
that much. And when you only have two to totems out, the damage, yeah, plummets into the drain. Oh my god, this is so bad for a five-star character. Let's be honest here, guys. I mean, at least the cooldown of uh, those charges where you have th uh, three off um, is only four seconds and the duration of those totems, 14 seconds. So this could be the saving grace because without Constellation 6 on Fischl, um, Oz has a downtime of like five seconds, I think. But yeah. Don't even look at the damage level 4, because to unlock this damage level 4, you need Yemiko on uh, Constellation 2. And the biggest part of the player base won't achieve that. Okay, so you will sit on those yeah, 132 or 33% uh, percent damage ratio on the scaling. And is it enough? Especially when um, only if you have those three totems out, simultaneously you get the same attack speed that um, Oz would have with his attacks although he's alone on the field is quite underwhelming yeah I don't lie guys let's transition to her elemental burst the great secret art Tenko Kenshin and as you can see <laughs> once you activate this bad boy over here the planetary strike of Yamiko's spaceship or something else uh, is going to start and you will rain down lasers and thunder strikes on your enemies. This is quite cool actually, but is it as powerful as yeah, the animation would suggest? One of the most important things to know about this skill is that you can't aim the planetary strike. It will come down at the locations of your totems. So the totems are once again a vital part of her kit. She's a World of Warcraft shaman. So you either have to be really mindful about your positioning and the placement of those totems, or you play with taunts in your teams. That's yeah, also a viable strategy. The damage of her elemental burst itself isn't that bad. I mean, the initial damage is on the lower end of five star elemental bursts, but the planetary strike packs quite a punch that yeah, doesn't have to be shy to be seen. To compare it with another really strong AoE attack, uh, this is Hu Tao's burst and uh, when she is on low HP, she will deal almost 500% of her total attack to all the enemies around her. Yemiko is, yeah, really close up to that at almost 470, but yeah, not as good as Hu Tao. But as I said, the most important difference of Hu Tao and Yemiko is that Hu Tao is from the pyro element, so she can double everything that you see here just because she is from the right element. And Yemiko just does this, yeah, almost 470 uh, percent of her attack. Maybe it crits. Yes, it does AoE, which is good, but that's it. There is no damage amplifying electro reaction. And the saddest part about her elemental burst is this 90 energy cost. I mean, what was Mihoyo thinking? I mean, it made sense with uh, the Raiden Shogun because with her elemental burst herself, she can just restore 10 energy for herself. So with Raiden, it was like her elemental burst had a cost of effectively 80. But with Yemiko, they do the same thing. All of a sudden and I don't agree with this um, game development choice because now you either need to play her with the electro resonance and miss out on uh, some huge potential damage you would get with let's say the pyro resonance or the cryo resonance with extra crit chance yeah and um, with this high of an energy cost, you basically need to either get uh, energy recharge from a weapon or you need energy recharge on your sands. And this decreases Yamiko's potential damage output uh, by a ton. I tell you guys, since the release of Hu Tao, Ganyu, Songli and maybe Xiao, 
MiHoYo is in constant fear to create another OP powerhouse character that breaks the game because for some reason in their business plan they don't uh, do champion or character reworks or balance updates. Yeah, I don't know why they do that. Maybe in the Chinese market there is a law against that, like uh, released character is a finished product and once you change it afterwards you get sued by some people. I don't know, but they don't do balance patches. So they leave the broken releases broken as fuck and with every uh, character release since then they are so scared of creating powerful characters and Yaimiko is I I wouldn't say she's uh, that much underwhelming but she's really subpar uh, to uh, what she could be. I mean, imagine just if her E, her elemental skill, would deal AoE damage instead of those lousy strikes that are comparable to Oz damage from Fischl. Imagine if this had a much higher ratio by like 300 because she is from the Electro element. She can't make use of those bullshit damage amplifying reactions anyway. So why didn't Mihoyo even give every player that plays Yaimiko the satisfaction of annihilating someone with a sky beam? Is it that hard? Okay, enough ranting, let's go over her passives. Her first passive is just a crafting bonus, which is nice, but we don't need to talk about that anymore. Her first ascension passive is quite mandatory for her playstyle, so get that ASAP. Because you see, whenever you call your shaman mothership to send down those uh, laser rays of doom, you will destroy every of your active uh, totems. And with your first ascension passive, you get those charges back whenever your elemental burst destroys a totem of yours. So you can keep the totem flow flowing. Your totem flow flowing. Wow, words. And her second ascension passive, I, I don't know what to think of that. In my opinion, this doesn't fit in the picture. Because suddenly, for every point of elemental mastery, your totems do more damage. But I did the math, and even with a full uh, elemental mastery build, you're not doing more damage than if you just go for attack, crit rate, and crit damage, yeah? Beca this is just such a strange... Uh, ascension passive because it contradicts everything we've seen before. Her uh, uh, her ascension stat is crit rate and we should all know by now that um, all elemental reactions from the electro element can't crit. So if you build elemental mastery due to this uh, ascension passive then her ascension uh, stat is there for nothing. It's there in vain. Yeah, and, and what does Mihoyu expect you to build? You already need attack, you need crit rate, you need crit damage to make crit rate worth it, and because of this <laughs> exorbitantly high energy cost of 90, you need energy recharge. Where do you have the space to build elemental mastery in addition to everything else Yemiko needs. I don't know. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the first time I call an ascension passive literally wasted. Or almost wasted because there is a weapon choice that makes this not 100% wasted and it even makes a weapon for the first time in Genshin Impact's lifespan in my opinion, usable. But we come to her weapon choices later. Let's take a look at her constellations right now. Constellation 1 isn't just a quality of life constellation, although it just centers around energy restoration. Because whenever you activate your burst for every um, totem that's getting hit with this uh, laser beam thingy, you will restore 8 energy which is yeah almost mandatory if you don't want to use an energy recharge sands which as i mentioned before um, lowers her damage output by a ton 
Constellation 2 is pretty interesting because now your totem starts at damage level 2 and their max level is 4 suddenly, which makes the totems better than fishes Oz. Yeah, except you have Constellation 6 Fischl because, in my opinion, Constellation 6 Fischl tramps Yamiko in consistent damage output. Yeah, not counting in the burst now and then, but consistent damage output on Fischl is better. Constellation 3 is just a talent boost. Constellation 4 is pretty interesting because uh, now your Yay Miko will transform into an Electro Team buffer. So maybe if you're a whale or if you saved up like from Genshin Impact starts until now for this character, this is maybe your time to shine. And maybe a constellation for Yay Miko makes pure Electro uh, character team comes viable. Constellation 5 is just once again a talent boost and Constellation 6 is pretty interesting because um, as Raiden Shogun's Constellation 2, uh, now your totem attacks will ignore 60% of your opponent's defense, which is huge because um, the damage of your totems isn't that high. Yeah, I'm a big fan, but it's on Constellation 6. So, who will get that? Only the whales. Welcome on my account. Just imagine that this watery girl witch right here is a pink-haired shaman princess, okay? I think uh, the most sensible weapon choice for Yemiko when you get her on your account when she is not that far built, even artifact-wise, is the Favonius Codex. Because it has a quite good amount of base attack, it gives energy recharge as secondary stat, so um, depending on your um, subs that rolls on your artifacts, you could go for a full attack um, sans, which is nice, and this passive helps tremendously with her energy generation. I mean, you need 90, and with this passive, you even help the energy generation of your whole team. But if you want to deal the big PP damage, then for the first time in Genshin Impact ever, I would recommend building the Witsith on a character. Until now, I called this weapon dog shit. Maybe the um, panda of the bell. Yeah, the bell panda of catalysts. But Yamiko can pretty much utilize every single one of those um, buffs that you get at random when Yamiko enters the battlefield. And this elemental mastery buff by 480 makes her totems hurt pretty much. So. Witsith, first usable character with Witsith. Yeah, I dig it. And of course, if you buy the battle pass, then I recommend the Solar Pearl because this passive is actually pretty good for Yamiko. Those two buffs you get don't cancel each other out. And since the totems are attacking constantly, you have a permanent 30% normal attack buff. Artifact-wise, I think Yamiko's most balanced artifact choice and go-to option is a four-piece emblem of Severed Fate because it gives her the much-needed energy recharge and it increases her elemental burst damage even more, which is cool. Of course, if you are set on those energy problems, you could go with a combination of two two-piece set bonuses that give just flat attack. And um, how is it called? I think the Thunder Soother, where the two-piece set bonus only gives you resistance or damage reduction, but the four-piece set bonus gives you a flat da uh, damage increase against opponents that are inflicted uh, by Electro. This is pretty good, yeah. Okay, and that was my Yay Miko character analysis. I hope you learned something and let me know down in the comments if you agree with me or disagree with me. As always, I hope we see each other in my other videos as well. Bye!